Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Gonzo Book. I'm Jose. Shelly's not here today. She's visiting her mother. And today's video is going to be about fire safety equipment. An RV. Let's talk about RVs. RV. <laughs> it's like paper mache. It's going to go up in flames if it gets caught. The first thing you want to do is get your family members out of the RV. If it's a very small fire, you alert them. You can try to put out the fire, but tell them to get out. Okay. If it's a fire that's a little bit out of control, first thing you want to do is get out, have them call 911, say there's a fire and um, at your campsite, what number it is. That's why it's always important to write these things down and to have it readily accessible because when you're talking, you're not going to remember what site you're in. Hey, you might not even remember what campground you're in. So if you write it all down, bam. Easier said than done, right? Yes. So first thing you do is get your family members out. Grab your pet. Get them out if the fire is not too bad. And remember, fire, the actual flames normally don't kill people. What kills people is the smoke. So you got to get out immediately, okay? Or at least get your family members out and your pet out. And there's two ways to get out of an RV. Is one of your doors, I only have one. Um, the main door and your fire escape window. And how many people in your family members know how to use your fire escape window? Um, doesn't seem too hard, but if you're nervous, never knew how to use it in the first place because you're reliant maybe on the other spouse, that's not a good idea because your spouse might be trying to put out the fire and now he's got to stop or she got to stop and open up the window for you. I am going to show you these things, how to use the fire blanket, how to use uh, the fire extinguisher, how to store the fire extinguisher and some things you need to do once or twice a year to your fire extinguisher to make sure it works properly. I am going to show you how to open up the fire escape window so uh, when it's time to use it and open it up you don't hesitate bam you got it open also want to talk about fire drills pretty simple fire drill and in a closed trailer like this but some people have mega trailers they have multiple uh, fire escapes they have one over here in the bunkhouse for the kids and the kids see it every day Exit, 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 exit. But do they know how to actually open up that window to get out? Or are they going to seek, when, they, when there's a fire and smoke, instead of getting out, are they going to seek their parents and maybe go into the fire because they're scared? They want their mom and they want their dad. It all depends. They don't know what to do. So if you do a fire drill and do it every so often, they know, get out. You can scream. Make, wake your parents up, fire, 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 but get out. And when you get out, there should be, always be a certain spot that you gather at because you don't want to get out and then you don't see your kids. And then you panic. Are they in, still inside the trailer? I thought they got out. And you run into the trailer and you die and your kids are somewhere where they're not supposed to be at. Without further ado, let's go do this and uh, knock this out. All right. This is my prepared hero fire blanket. I got this online. It comes in a nice case. It's red, you can see it. It has a hole here so you can hang it up. When you need it, you grab it with two hands and you pull on these tabs with two hands. Pull on it. It's gonna open it up and these Pull tabs are actually on the blanket. 
So when you pull on it, that's what's going to come out. Your blanket. And then when you get your blanket out, you unravel the blanket. That's so. And there it goes. It is made out of a certain fireproof material. And what you do is you drape it on the fire. Don't throw it on the fire. Drape it on the fire and it's supposed to smother it. Okay? And it smothers it pretty decently fast if you have uh, over there some cooking. Now, it's, it's going to be a decently small fire. So when you throw it over, it's going to go out. Now, if the fire was raging a little bit and it caught something, the cabinet on fire, but now you have the cabinet on fire, you can't use this then you have to go to your fire extinguisher. Okay, but at least the main part of the fire where it started is out. So you got that out. Okay. The next thing I got was a five pound fire extinguisher A, B, C. A, B, C fire extinguisher. Um, it wasn't a cheapy one. Good quality. Now, since I got it, I haven't shaken it up. And you should, every, periodically, maybe twice a year, put it upside down. Let the powder that's in there go from the bottom back up to the top. Hit it a few times. Shake it a few times. All right. Get that thing going because it's... If it's on the wall, it's going to be on a wall like this. Excuse me. It's going to be on a wall like this. And if you don't touch it in five, six, seven years, all the uh, powder is going to go down below and the propellant goes to the top, which is not good. So when you grab it and you uh, start using the, the fire extinguisher, you're going to blow out all the propellant before... Uh, the powder. So, you need to every so often shake it. Shake it. And you should also check the gauge. Here is on the green. That means it has enough pressure in there. If it's at recharge, might not have enough pressure or somebody used it and didn't tell you. Once you use a fire extinguisher, you should replace it. Now, a for safety reasons, a fire extinguisher has a pull pin. Um, it's on there with a tab that tells you that it was filled and no one has used it yet. That's why there's a tab there. And this is for safety reason too. Safety reason for kids. So if you're ever uh, going to your um, RV and you don't see that, Somebody was messing with the uh, the fire extinguisher or got caught in, on their belt or whatever and it got pulled. You want to make sure it's still full and you might want to put one new tab on there or get a check and put a new tab on there just to make sure this is still good. Because this is going to save your life. This is going to save maybe your camper or your property. All right. So pull. That releases the handle. And now you can squeeze. Now, when you use a fire extinguisher, they have an acronym called PASS. PASS. All right. When you get it PASS, P, pull. P, pull ring. Pull it. Aim. Aim your hose. Or if you don't have a hose, sometimes you just have a metal uh, nozzle right here. Aim it at the base of the fire. The base of the fire. If you aim it to the flames, the base of the fire is still producing flames. So you get that little flame out and it's still going to go. So if you aim at the base of the fire and you have enough fire extinguisher, you're probably going to get it out. Okay. If it hasn't spread to other places, of course. So aim at the base of the fire. Pull, aim. S for pass, there's two S's, squeeze. Once you squeeze, 
it's coming out. So you pull, aim, squeeze, sweep at the base of the fire. Okay? Sweep at the base. Let's do that again. Pass. You got to remember pass. Because if you remember an acronym, you can remember the steps. Okay? The steps are also right on the fire extinguisher. But when the fire is raging, you don't want to do this. Hold upright. Pull ring. You don't want to do that because now the fire might have been going a little bit further and you could have stopped it. Now you can't stop it. Every second counts. Okay. And it's also in Spanish in case you didn't know. So one thing I did mention that I read here is eight feet, at least eight feet. You want to stand back eight feet. You don't want to get too close. <clears throat> All right. Pass. Pull. Aim. Squeeze. Sweep. Pull. Aim. Squeeze, sweep. ABC, let's talk about ABC. A. A is for combustible items like wood, trash, paper. They say anything that turns to ash is A, okay? Liquid fires, gasolines, grease fires, right here, B. Electrical equipment. Electrical fires are different than other fires this fire extinguisher can put a electrical fire out a b and c if you have a smaller fire extinguisher that doesn't have a gauge on it it might only be b and c you got to check okay they have a little green or red button on the top in order to check for pressure you got to push that green level down and if it comes back up it's still good if you push it down and it doesn't come back up, that means it's bad. Get rid of it. Buy a new one. Okay. <clears throat> Another thing about fire extinguisher is you have one in the inside. I have two in the inside. The five pound and the one that the trailer came with. I have the five pound right underneath the bed. Another thing I think for the fire extinguisher, you need at least one inside at least one five pounder in my opinion or multiple small ones and you need one on the outside because if the fire breaks out on the outside you don't always have time to come inside to get the fire extinguisher so you want to put one in one of your um, luggage compartments okay uh, put it somewhere where you can open it up grab it right away or when you get to a campground you can take it out and stick it underneath uh, by one of the stabilizers uh, and that's where you always have it when you're camping live underneath your trailer uh, so you know where it's at your family knows where it's at everybody who maybe might run by to help you out might see it it's out and they can grab it and help you out or if somebody needs it for their RV grab it I want you to be safe too we're all campers we're neighbors I want you to save your pet, save your RV, save your family, and save yourself. Grab my uh, five pounds. I forget how much it costs, but I think it was $30, $40. I'll go back and get another one. Okay? You need one on the outside, and you need one on the inside. All right, it's very important. This is our fire safety exit. This is our bed. We have a north-south bed. And on Shelly's side, opposite of the entranceway, we have this fire exit window. Nice location. All right, this is how you open it. It has a latch here. You unlatch it. Okay, it goes all the way out. Now, if you're just using it to get air in it, bam, right here. You get that nice cool breeze, especially when you have a window on the opposite side open. But you want to get out. So you got this pool, this little red pool thing. That takes the screen out. Let's see how easy that is. There you go. It's out. Came out pretty easy. Now you want to lift. There's a little tab here to keep it. But you want to push it all the way out. See that? Now you want to grab a blanket like this. 
for, if you didn't use your fire blanket, you can use your fire blanket. But you grab the comforter, shape your comforter over this edge. Because when you're trying to get out, this is going to dig into your hamstrings and stuff. Put your, so when you're getting out, all you got to do is pull it all the way out and then drop down. We're not that high. We don't live in a fifth wheel. Okay, fifth wheel, they got that high. You might have a uh, window on this side. When you get out, it's far down. Okay, so if you have a family member that's scared, uh, you might want to put something there so they can put their feet on so they can climb down. Now, make sure this is back in nicely. I'll take a look at it later on. My smoke detector right now is winterized and it's open. The reason why it's open is because it doesn't have a battery in it. This would tell me when I'm de-winterizing my RV to, hey, I need to put a battery in before my next trip, once it's warm enough. The reason you take the battery out because if it gets too cold, I live in Pennsylvania, it gets too cold and my swell it might uh, uh, corrode and it's going to ruin your, your smoke detector. So when you winterize it, you take the battery out and you keep it open. So you know you need to get a reminder to put the battery back in or get a new battery. So that's my smoke detector. All right. And you should change the battery. Mine takes a nine volt. So I'm thinking once a year. Uh, you should be good. Or you should test it twice a year. The beginning. And maybe near near the end before you take the last couple of trips. <sighs> Hello there. The RV CO and propane gas alarm. So that one says CO. So it's carbon monoxide and propane. It's down here. It's green. That means it has power to it. Usually these have power straight to your battery. Okay, and I'm not sure how this sounds. I really don't want to mess with it. It's called RV Safe. Do not paint over it. Green means good. I can't read anything else on it. That's for your propane. You have a propane leak, and it's going to go low. I think CO also is low. Uh, so when you have those leaks and that goes off, don't think it's a false alarm, okay? Take it seriously. If it's propane, you, that goes off, go outside and shut your propane off. It's better to be safe than sorry, okay? If it's a propane leak and it hits a pilot light somewhere, if your pilot light's in the oven, it might go off. It might... uh uh, ignite that propane. So if you hear, a, and a CO can kill you deadly, because you can't smell it, you can't, once you hear it, get out and keep the door open too. Try to open up all the windows and air it out, because the CO can kill you. It's a silent, deadly killer, okay? Uh, you might have a CO leak in your house, and you don't know it, and next day, your whole family's dead. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Propane is dangerous because um, it can ignite. Okay? Usually it lingers on the floor, but if it ignites, the camper is going to go up in flames. Okay? So if you hear it, get out, open the windows, get your family out, get some fresh, get to some fresh air. That's it. That's the CO propane gas alarm. The last thing I want to talk about is fire drills. I touched it on it before, but it's very important to go over these things with your loved ones and a guest. If you have a guest, uh, if River or a grandkid invites a friend over and they sleep on the couch, uh, for a day or two of camping. We want to sit her down, her friend, and her to make sure she knows where to go in case of a fire, what to do in case of a fire. 
Kids tend to panic. People tend to panic. There's always got to be someone there with a, with a straight head that knows all the procedures and knows what to do. But you also got to train the others on what to do because you don't have time to explain everything. All you got to do is get out. You got time to get out the door. Stay out. And hopefully they know where they're going. Just say if there's a fire, I am going to try to put out the fire. But I need you guys to either go out this door first. If you can't get through the door because of the fire or the smoke, there's the fire exit window. Okay, if they don't know how to use a fire exit window, that's a good time to train them on the fire exit window. Make sure they get out. Accountability is priority one. Shelly gets out. If it's just her and Bentley, she can account for that right away. If it's her, Bentley, grandkids, friends, or whoever, you want to account for them. Once you account for them, you're good. Because I'm inside, now you have to wait for me to go outside. So I'm going to go outside once I can't put the fire out. Even if I do put the fire out, there's still smoke. I want to get the hell out so I can breathe some uh, good air. I'm going to go uh, shut the, make sure the propane's off, go across the street, and have her account for me. And I'm going to ask her, is everybody else accounted for? And she's going to say either yes or no. One thing I didn't mention is, at night, we always put our latch, the deadbolt on, on our door. So nobody can open the door and come in. Uh, if you're trying to go out that door, it ain't going to open. You got to train your family and your guests that if it doesn't open right away, it's because it's red. You got to undo the red and then you can get out. One of the things I wanted to mention is electrical fires. Don't overload your outlets. They use the cheapest outlet out there because they're trying to keep the cost down. If you overload your outlets, it might cause fire. Uh, so right now I'm using a heater and it's on this outlet. I'm using my fireplace is plugged in to another outlet. Uh, they're not connected to the same outlet. So just keep that in mind. If they get hot, it might cause a fire. Uh, remember, your ABC fire extinguisher can put out on an electrical fire. Okay, that's what cease is for. All right, I believe I am done. There's no way that I have touched on every possible thing or scenario. Okay, so I am not an expert. Keep that in mind. I'm not an expert. I've been trained in fire prevention <coughs> because of my job, but still, I am not an expert on everything okay i'm not a firefighter i'm just here to help the people who watch my video who might stumble upon my video uh to try to get some good information or try to put out some good information uh to help them out and maybe help them in a fire or prevent a fire or get their family prepared for a event uh, like that. So, disclaimer, I am not a firefighter. This is not the end all of all videos. I took my knowledge of fire prevention and fire equipment. I watched other videos and I put all my knowledge together to try to put out an informative video. But this is not the end all stop all for your videos. Go to another video. Go to a few other videos because I might have something that I missed. And uh, and if I did, I apologize. I'm just trying to do uh, the best I can on the video. But just keep that in mind, please. Uh, fire prevention, keep your family safe. It should be our number one priority. So I appreciate everybody watching. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Me and Shelly will appreciate it. Uh, we try our best uh, and hope our best is good enough. Uh, so without further ado, I'll see you guys on the other side.